I don't know, maybe uh, So there is one guy who doesn't speak Japanese. When he's here, I would like to do this in Japanese in English. And I think most of you are fine with this, okay? As far as I understood from your resumes, you guys are okay with this, right? Yeah. Okay. I see some surprised faces, but you should be expecting this. So um, this is going to be short, but quite fun, intensive course for three days, and um, hopefully you enjoy this. And then, um, so first thing first, we're going to cut down this number into half after a three-day course because uh, we cannot handle um, so too many people like this uh, to start our first, very first uh, batch of our KO Edge program. And I will talk about what KO Edge program is and then what we're aiming uh, when we get more people in. So before we start, how many people saw all the videos that I sent you? Good. Any comments? Okay, which one was? Uh, uh, I, well, what I like the most is the, the David Kelly, the, the how to, uh, about the creative confidence. Creative confidence, yes, yes. It was about a 12 minute mm -hmm. uh, presentation, yeah. Yeah, that's that's one of my best too. Um, non SDM people. Okay, we have um, so many SDM people as a spies in the, in the tables. <laughs> <laughs> so, who are SDM people? Raise your hand. Okay, these are your spies. <laughs> They're my spies, spying on you if, if you understood the material and if you're not talking um, something else. Um, that's, that's not true. They're, they're just um, here to, to be a global entrepreneur as well as you guys. So um, non-SDM people, who saw a video and what, any comment on that? Yeah? So, so. What's that? No, you don't have to be looking at all the videos. Uh, well, I, I really like Gentry. Yeah. Lecture. Yeah. Because the system is here is something that's pretty far from my background. Right. And but I found some common areas. Good. And things that he said. Right, and he's yeah. a really funny guy, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Can you believe he's like the one of the top engineers in NASA? Well, well, he's like out of my. Imagination, right. because I thought that people from NASA must be really, really square-headed and really, really smart, intelligent people. Right. Well, oh, you're right about the later half. They're smart and intelligent, but not uh, like a um, smart ass, but he's a, <laughs> quite a funny guy. Yeah. That's true. I mean, okay. like the fact that he said that when you are trying to work at the front end, when you're trying to make something new, and you have to be happy to Right, we all share that yeah. uh, feeling, that's true. Who else watched that NASA guy video, 45 minutes? Crazy long. But, uh, you better, it's, it's really fun. It's, it's, okay, please, you need to skip the first five minutes because there will be an Indian guy talking about stuff, right? Yeah, you understand what I'm saying, yes. So just skip that part and get to the, to the, the meat, yes. Okay, so um, I hope you saw all the short videos and did you integrate that in your head? I mean, you know, there were three types of videos, right? So one was talking about system engineering, one was talking about more about design, and one talking about on a more on the business side. So basically, these three aspects are what we're doing here in KO Edge. So you're gonna cover those aspects in three days. Today, we're mainly focusing on the design approach which is um, design thinking, will be, we will be talking about a lot about design thinking, but not about um, doing stuff with um, Clados and um, crayons, but we will talk about the philosophy and mindset about this. And then we're gonna do a little bit of uh, exercise on their techniques and tools. And then the next day, the second day will be a 29th, will be on uh, next Saturday. It's gonna be, we're gonna be covering the system approach, which is my expertise. I'm a system engineer. I will talk about myself a little bit, but um, that's my expertise. And uh, um, you can think as system, 
and you can approach your um, target or um, system of interest as a system. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to do some exercise on that too. And on the third day, we're going to talk about business synthesis. So this is the term we coined uh, for this um, KO Edge because you usually call it business analysis or financial analysis, but instead we would like to call it business synthesis. So analysis and synthesis comes in pair, right? And then we think it, it's always a synthesis that happens first, and then you analyze it to make sure your synthesis is correct, or you make an iteration out of this two aspects. So that's the whole concept of the <laughs> business synthesis, and we're gonna do that in third day. So that's gonna be a lot in three days, and um, I hope you enjoy it, and um, it's gonna be in this room. Yeah, all three days gonna be in this room. Okay, how many people do we have right now? How many missing? Like four more? Okay, five more coming. All right, I'm gonna start anyways. So, um, oh, again, welcome. So you are here for um, KO Edge program, and then um, here's a little explanation on the edge. So I have um, handed out the, the packet that I'm showing right now. This is the packet. Um, it says uh, introduction. So you can take a look at that, or it's, it's exactly the same. So um, if, you want to, if you want to look up here, that's fine. Um, so this program is funded by MEX, Ministry of Education, um, Technology, Blah, 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 Sports, Science, and whatsoever. That's all included in this X. So that's kind of funny. But so this is funded by MEX, and then it's going to run for three years. And then this is what they're claiming. So, Nihon ni okere innovation sourcing no kasseka no tame daigaku no kenkyu sky hat seka o moto ni shita venture no sogyo ya kizon kigyo ni yoru shinjigyo no sourcing so so kushin suru jin dai no kuse. See how I'm excited about this. So, I don't know, the, the way, they, way they put this is so boring. <laughs> I don't know why, but. This is, this is how they do this. Yeah, this is usually how they do this. So basically, they want global um, entrepreneur. That's what they want. And then a global entrepreneur doesn't make much sense to you, does it? Well, when we, when we first uh, got this um, letter of, of, um, of uh, they, they were looking for 13 universities to join this program and then we were writing our proposal. We have no idea what the global entrepreneur is because it doesn't make much sense, right? So we would like to say we, gonna, we will be aiming to develop the entrepreneur in global context, okay? Who can see, who can feel, who can think in a global context. That makes much more sense, to me, I guess, right? So, even though they say global entrepreneur, we will say entrepreneur in global context. It's, it, it sounds really similar, but I think it, it transmits a little bit more than, uh, more than global entrepreneur. So that's what we're aiming. And we have a great mix of um, our student in here at KO, and we have even undergrad student and grad student, and we have people from outside of KO. So let's see hands. Okay, who are undergrad in KO? Undergrad, okay, all right. I know there's one teenage guy, right? Okay, you are, 19? 18, good. All right, you're the youngest, that's for sure. All right, we're gonna find out who the oldest No, <laughs> We won't do that because it, it will be some people, one of us, so, yeah. that, that, okay. So who's in the grad school in KO system? KO grad school? No, 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 regardless, okay. Okay, you guys are grad school, school students, okay? All right, that, okay, I, I want to see from hands from SDM students too, all the grad students, including SDM, okay? All right, thank you. Non-KO people, non-KO people, okay? Who used to be in KO? Okay, good, good, thank you. Who are the faculty member and staff? <laughs> These people, all right, good, thank you. So, this is your, your buddies today. I think we have a good portion of um, different background, and then I think we have about one-third of, a, of a, a female population in the room. 
So I think that's that's really important to, to um, keep up the diversity. And we have a variety of background. We have, um, okay, who are science, engineering, so to say, BK people? Okay. Who are, so to say, BK people? Non-engineering art. That means you. That's right. Yes. All right. Good. So, okay, we have a we have a good mix of, of that aspect too. So, um, we're trying to um, keep that diversity in the room, and then, of course, diversity will help us run this program. All right. So, we're going to talk about this for three days, and we're going to talk about different approaches to approach this. Who knows anything about this? Yes. It's very interesting. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> I think so too. Innovation is quite interesting. Anybody else? Who knows anything? Yeah, please. Something new. Something new, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of hard to think about it. Ah, yes. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. The definition is not big. Exactly. You can read 10 books and you will find out 10 different definitions. Or you, if you read 100 books, you'll find 100 different, different definitions. But everyone out there is talking about this. And then this program, next um, funded program, we are aiming to provide the entrepreneurs or innovators who, are, who will aim for this goal, so to say. And then I would like to... Um, share our definition for KO Edge program. Because you know, we, do not, we do not want to discuss something we don't know, right? So for now, for this program, we, I would like to um, make a definition. And we can or, always discuss. If you don't agree, if you have any different op, um, opinions, then we can always, agree, we, we can always dis, um, discuss. But let's start from this definition. So this is the definition taken from a book called um, Innovation Management. This is a very famous or popular book among MBA students in the United States. And then, um, oh, I forgot to put the, the work cited on the, the last sheet, I guess. I will put that up online later. Oh, yes, before I forget. So you can download all the materials in PD, PDF format from this Google short address. Um, so you can do that, and it's up it's it's up online already. So if you want to download that now, then so okay. From this book, innovation is defined as it is a process of turning opportunity into new ideas and of putting these into widely used practice. Okay, so there there is two very important aspects in this. So okay, it's turning opportunity into new ideas. So someone said, it's new, right, that you're right. And it's got to be something new, new idea. And there's a later half that many people are missing, probably. You need to put this into widely used practice, OK? So you cannot just claim your brightest, newest idea and say, hey, this is an innovation. No, that's an invention, OK? Or just a new idea. So. If, if you want to be recognized as innovation, then you need to put it in, into widely used practice. So this is the latest, and I think the clearest definition that I've ever seen. And here's the Japanese version of this. アウトフツールに日本人のおじさんなんですけど、関関西学院大学感覚MBAのあの教授の先生で、あの皆さんイノベーションのジレンマっていう本ご存知ですかね。あの本の和訳を書いてるのがこの玉野先生です。で、我々
I don't think a term innovation bugs you so much. I don't think so. But if you're Japanese and if you hear this term in a Japanese context, it bugs you so much because many people use this term very different, right? So I think for, for those who live in Japanese context, I think you need to um, remind yourself of this definition sometimes. And maybe you need to discuss with uh, someone you're talking to about the definition as, as such. And I really like Soshin Fuku uh, really much because it, it, I think it, it works pretty well. And then it, it means um, quite, um, I think people can understand this quite easily. So I like this term and then uh, maybe we should stick to this definition. And one more thing is that innovation, if you are doing innovation, you probably don't know you are in the middle of it, probably. Because innovation is defined retrospectively. So sometime in the future, people, a, lot, a large enough number of people will look back and say, hey, that was an innovation, right? So if you're running ahead of this innovation, then you probably don't know if you're in it or not, okay? Maybe it will be people around you in the near future or sometime in the future will say, hey, that was an innovation. So it's, I think, this is my, my, this is my understanding, I, I think innovation is a social phenomena which could be, which only could be um, recognized in, in a retrospective um, way, okay? So that, that's what I think. So my personal opinion is if you see someone saying, hey, I am doing innovation, I think he's a, he's a Yes, yes, right, you know that, right? He wants to make an innovation, but he's not doing innovation. That's how I think, okay? But I can give you some examples um, of innovation. So, let's, these are our favorite examples of innovation. Ishiba-sensei, yes. before that, we want to confirm the photo, even to get... Oh, okay, yes, true. So, today we're going to be shooting some um, uh, photographs and videos, and are you okay with this? Or if you are absolutely not okay with this, please, I, I want to know that. Is everyone okay taking photos? Okay? Or right, you're not secretly here? <laughs> Good. And you had a question? Anyone had a question? Okay. So, okay. I wanted to show you the videos. Ten years ago, he was diagnosed with leukemia, but thankfully, his life was saved by a complete stranger who had registered to be a marrow donor. He was lucky, though. You see, more than 650,000 people are diagnosed with leukemia and lymphoma every year. And for the most severe cases, like my brother's, a marrow transplant is their last hope. But only about half find a match. Unfortunately, the marrow donor registry is one of the most underrepresented donor programs in the world. And it's no wonder, really. Most people think that registering as a marrow donor is painful and complicated. 
but really, all it takes is a couple drops of blood. The only pain is actually finding a way to register. Now, you have to either take time out of your busy day to go to a special doctor, or order a registration kit online, pay $16 for it, and while you're at it, pay for the shipping. We've made it so difficult to register. It's amazing that a few good people out there care enough to jump through all these hoops just to save a random person's life. But the fact is, most don't. Imagine, though, how many lives could be saved if registering as a marrow donor wasn't so hard. What if we could turn a normal, everyday act into a chance to save a life? Introducing Help. I want to save a life. A package of over-the-counter bandages that also doubles as a simple marrow donor registry kit. So the next time you cut yourself shaving or shuffling papers or making dinner and you reach for a box of bandages, you'll have a chance to save someone's life. You just put a couple of drops of blood on the swabs, toss it in a prepaid envelope, drop it in the mail, and that's it. You're a potential lifesaver. This simple idea brought together a pretty unlikely pair, Help Remedies, a pharmaceutical company, and DKMS, the world's largest marrow donor registry. And then something pretty amazing happened. The TED conference chose it as one of their favorite ideas of the year, and even helped us launch it at this year's global conference. And since then, the whole world's helped us spread the word and share our story. And in just a few short months, sales of health bandages are already up more than 1900%. But amongst all these sales figures and media impressions and YouTube hits, there's really only one statistic that matters. Thanks to this little pack of bandages, marrow registrations have nearly tripled. Who would have thought a few paper cuts could make a world of difference? and actually save lives. So, so do you agree that this is an innovation? What do you think? According to the definition, it's you create something new and then you make it why do you spread, right? So according to that definition, I think this is a great innovation. And it's not about new technology, but it's a new approach, right? Um, so there is always a um, conventional approach for getting more donors, right? You can, you can just stand in, the, in front of the big station, like Shibuya station, and then call it out loud, you know, for, for donations, but uh, for donors. but. These people, the health remedies, you can go to their um, website and you can find uh, various versions of um, this I want to uh, help whatever um, product and it's really interesting. They had this um, before this um, um, help I want to save a life idea and then they had a um, great partnership with this um, guy who was looking for a partnership to, do, to realize his idea. So that's how it happened. And you can read about this in a, in a various website. So I think this is a great um, example of innovation. And then I, I wanted to show you this because many of you might have an idea that innovation um, includes or innovation has something to do with a technology. Okay. Yes, that's true. That's true in some cases, but it's not always true. Okay. So that's the image that I, I really want you to um, focus on, or I really want you to understand that innovation does not require new technology, but it does require a new idea, or new concept, or new approach, okay? All right, so the next one is another um, example of what I think is an innovation. I hope you, I, I, I don't know what, if you agree this or not, but, oh, before, before I get into this, um, who knows um, Black Friday, the concept of Black Fly Friday? Okay, let me explain. So the third, uh, the, the third week of November, and then on, on that Thursday, that's a Thanksgiving in the United States. Thanksgiving, you eat turkeys. Okay, in Japan, I don't know why, but in Christmas you eat chicken, right? But that's only true in Japan. You don't do that in the United States. Many of my American friends ask me why we do that 
I don't even know why. Maybe it's a KFC strategy that they successfully um, introduced that idea to Japanese culture. But however, back to the story. So that Friday, the right after the Thanksgiving, it's called Black Friday, and there will be a big, big sales in big st stores like Best Buy, Target, and things like this. Okay, so big retail store goes on a big, big sales. Um, starting from this Friday to um, to the Christmas, and it's called holiday season. It's a holiday season shopping. So, and what happens in the United States is that, so of course the retail stores, the large retails, they sell the most in in, in a year. Okay, this season is the highest um, sales um, of the of the year. However. The small businesses, like, you know, um, it, it's usually called Papamam shop, right? So these shops do not sell so much because of the big retails doing mega sale. So that's been a social issue for years and years in the United States. And this action was taken by American Express to um, somewhat um, mitigate this social um, issue. And then they did it in a successful way um, in terms of their business as well. So I think this is a great example of innovation. In 2010, American Express created Small Business Saturday, a new shopping day right after Black Friday to help small businesses get what they needed most, more customers. But for 2011, the goal was clear. Make Small Business Saturday more than just a one-off event and cement its place as an official shopping day during the holiday season. American Express couldn't do that single-handedly, so they rallied business owners, consumers, and public officials to help. First, they gave small business owners a toolkit to carry the day. American Express armed them with everything they need from a shop small badge, to posters, to social marketing tools. This digital kit featured a YouTube video maker for businesses to make their own ads, a Facebook page builder, and a way to launch online deals through Foursquare. Over 500,000 owners took advantage. Next, American Express reached out to get public officials on board. Communities and states from coast to coast declared their support. Even the Senate stepped up and passed a resolution declaring Small Business Saturday an official day, unanimously. Finally, American Express rallied millions of shoppers to join the movement by finding local businesses and pledging to make one small purchase. I pledge to shop small at Big Top Candy Shop. I want the business. At Juno Baby Store. Make the pledge to shop small. Please. Shop small on Small Business Saturday. So how big was it? You know, a 20% increase. Our sales were up about 30%. 166% increase from last year. In the end, it became a top 10 trending topic on Twitter. The second annual Small Business Saturday reached 2.7 million likes on Facebook, more than double the first year. Most importantly, 103 million Americans shop small, from California to Washington, D.C. This is Small Business Saturday, so we're, we're out here supporting small business. In just over a year, Small Business Saturday went from a day that didn't exist to a permanent fixture on the holiday shopping calendar. See you next year. So this was the second example. Again, there's no technology, well, some technology involved, of course. There was a Facebook and Twitter, but nothing new, nothing new. But it was a concept of um, Small Business Saturday, and then it was widely spread. And I, I, can, I can almost say this is artificial innovation because they accelerated, they penetrated throughout the United States. I think the American Express was strategic and then they were pushing so that this concept will go through um, the many heads of the American people. So it's a little different with the health remedies version because health remedies took, took off by itself almost. But I think this American Express was well promoted and well organized so that it will go throughout um, in, in, in many people's minds, I guess. So I think this is another great example of um, type of innovation. 
And there's a third one. And so, okay, this is another really famous example. Of course, I'm pretty sure you know the Banco Popular de Fred Velico, right? Because that's really popular. No way, right? Nobody knows Puerto Rico Kokumin Ginko, right? But okay, they were um, very innovative in a way um, to, to turn their country around, okay? So I'll just show you this. Living off welfare has become a common way of life, so common that it is celebrated in the greatest salsa hit of all time, La Bolana, which translates to, I do nothing. belongs to a Gran Combo de Puerto Rico, the most famous salsa band in the world. As the largest bank in Puerto Rico, Banco Popular's success depends on the island's economy. So to help propel it in the right direction, it convinced the Gran Combo to rewrite history. On August 16th, a simultaneous broadcast roadblocked all of the country's TV and radio stations. The band unexpectedly released a new version of their song with new lyrics. This time, with a completely different message. took over the media. A day after, Banco Popular launched a PR campaign to make it the country's most popular song. The song made it all the way up to the top of the charts and generated over $2 million in earned media. In times when banks are particularly disliked, the campaign increased Banco Popular's image and reputation index to a record 80%. It also sparked a debate that grew into a movement of Puerto Ricans committed to the progress. Yeah, for, for those quite didn't catch the content, これあのプエルトリコ国民銀行がプエルトリコってあの国民の 60% ぐらいが生活保護に引っかかっちゃうぐらいこう非常に勤勉な国民性だったでこれまずいということになって、まあ、当然あの国の税制を逼迫してるということでこのプエルトリコ国民銀行があのプエルトリコで一番人気だった歌が最初に出てきた歌ですね。まあ、何もせずに、まあゆっくり暮らそうやみたいな、まあ、国民全員ボブ周りみたいな状態なわけですね<笑>その状態をなんとかひっくり返そうということである日突然ですねその、まあ、今までのヒットソングだったあの歌をですね全部歌詞を書き換えてで、まあ、メディアを全部ジャックしてそれを一斉に国中に流し始めるということをやったとそうするとですねプエルトリコの人みんなとっても素直みたいなでみんな働き始めるということが、ね、起きましたよということで。これはあのちょっとプエルトリコの友達がいる方ぜひ確認してみていただきたいんですけどこれ一説によるといやそんなそうでもなかったよっていう2チャンネルみたいなところの書き込みを見たりですねちょっと事実のことは分かりませんがまあこういうことが起きたということですね。So I think this is another great example of、um, how innovation could be,、um, could be planned or、um, actually activated. By somebody's idea and somebody's action. So I think this is a great example. So these three were、um, e x a m p l e of innovation. So you come up with something new, right? New idea, and then you spread so that it will be、um, acknowledged and appreciated as, as,、um, as a new norm or new habit, right? So that was the definition of innovation. So s h i n k y u right? And next three videos. These are examples of innovative or innovative thinking or innovativeness. Okay? So I want you to try to think how is it different. But still, these are really, really interesting. <laughs>
So this I showed you as an example of innovative thinking. Can anybody explain why this is not innovation but innovative? Anyone wants to try? Why this is not innovative? Yes? Yes? Ah, yes, exactly. Maybe they, people get bored overnight, right? Yes. But quite a new approach. Quite a new approach. Because conventional approach will be you putting up a sign saying you should trash your garbage into the trash can. Right? That will be the conventional approach, but they took another road, another road. And it's interesting why these people are doing this, but I'm going to show you another video of this series, and I will explain a little bit about this. Again, this is the same series called Fun Theory. You can go to funtheory.com and you can see a bunch of these kind of videos. And so the insight behind this was it was in the it was written during the movie, but they thought if you add fun into um, daily activity or something that you want many people to engage in, people will do. Instead of forcing them, instead of making a rule to do, do so, um, you can add a little bit of funness to whatever activity that you want to propagate through people's mind, and you will achieve this. So that was the insight of these folks, Volkswagen. And the interesting part is that why they, these people, the Volkswagen, are doing something like this. So they have this insight, and they are trying to apply this so that they can help the kids in the back seat to put on more seat belts, okay? To get the more seat belt fastened um, kids on the back seat. これ車の後部座席の子供たちの、えー、なんですかシートベルト装着率を上げるためにこういうことが使えないかなということをボルクスワーゲンは考えてるっていうところが面白いですよね。I used to work for Honda. Maybe I should talk about myself, but I will in a, in a, in a few moments. But I used to work for Honda as an engineer. And us engineers think with, in, a, in a very, very non-innovative way, most of the cases, most of the cases. And we never had this kind of idea of not forcing the people to put on the seatbelts or put on the helmets, but um, they had a very, very different approach of making it fun so that people will engage in this activity. So I, I thought as an engineer who used to work for an automobile company, I think this is a really, really innovative and it's a creative way to approach your target or a purpose. The third one is a little bit different taste, but I will show you this anyway because it's really interesting.
So this was an um, approach done by um, Contracts, who sells a, a special kind of water. And then, of course, water <clears throat> is, a, is a commodity, and you don't make much difference. You know, it's very difficult to differentiate, right? Because everyone else is making the same water. But Contracts took this approach to give a very different image of um, um, water, which cannot be different, different, um, differentiated so easily. So this was a French um, commercial done in 2011. So these three are example of innovativeness, okay, innovativeness. And this is not something that's widely spread yet, right? And probably get, old, you know, get bored overnight or so, or maybe a couple days at, at most. So there are difference between innovative, being innovative and coming up with an innovative idea and then actually making innovation happen. So in a KOS, um, KO Edge program, we would like to distinguish these two. Being innovative and aiming for innovation is something very different. So the approach we can take is we can aim for innovative idea or solution and we, can, we wish or we hope or then we plan and we act so that it will become innovation at some point in the future. So I don't think non-innovative idea will become innovation, right? And maybe many innovative idea dies along the way before it becomes an innovation, okay? So I think, I think many of we, us agree on that, right? Not all the innovative idea survives to become innovation, but I think all the innovation happened from maybe a small innovative idea. Do you see that, you know, there is no equal um, equation here? So I think that's what we're trying to aim. So we would like to stick to this innovation um, definition and then, innov and then distinguish between innovative and then innovation. Okay. Wow, I'm doing so behind the time. But <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So here are three important things that we will be trying to achieve in this KO Edge program. And then this is what, what we like you to be thinking. Think outside of the box. Okay? This is quite important to come up with innovative idea. And then, of course, business-wise, because we are talking about entrepreneurship, we, it's very important to present the new value proposition. Okay? Not, a, not regular value proposition, but it's a new and maybe innovative value proposition. It's very, very important to think outside of the box. The second point is that you need to orchestrate the implementation. We use the term orchest orchestrate because you may not be the only one doing this, right? You will probably, not probably, you will definitely find your buddies to start your new business or new idea, right? So we use the term or orchestrate the implementation. And of course you want to orchestrate so that you have a solid start, solid start with your new business idea or, or your new um, venture business idea. And the third point is accelerate penetration. So as we saw in American Express example, it, did not took off itself, probably. So American Express carefully planned and carefully iterated, probably, to penetrate their new concept and idea throughout the continent of North America, right? So accelerate penetration is something you need to work on to aim for the growth. Growth of your concept, growth of your business, growth of your idea. So KO Edge program is basically, could be summarized as you aim for a new value proposition. So this is a KO Edge person, which is you. You aim for a new value proposition, and then you aim for solid start, and then you aim for growth, okay? So this is, I want or we want you to be aiming. And then what you do is that you find insight so that you will achieve the new value proposition, and then you orchestrate implementation 
so that you will have a solid start. And you, I, 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 we really want you to accelerate the penetration so that you will have a growth. Okay? So this is cause and effect relationship that we want you to be thinking. And then you, uh, we would like you to behave like this. So ideation, we will talk about a lot about this today. And then structuralization or organization, we will be talking about this in the second day about um, as, as a systems approach. And then this is something we cannot teach you. Think different. You always need to think different. You want to be different from somebody else's idea. You want to be different from somebody else's concept. This is not something we can teach. Okay? This is something we wish you have that. Okay? But we can teach you some ideation techniques. We can teach you some structuralization on techniques and organization techniques. But we cannot teach you the thinking different the mentality or the mindset. So um, our KO Edge pro program does not um, necessarily um, aim for startup CEOs, but uh, we uh, would like to produce this type of person and various types of innovators and in various types of um, circumstances. So we have some students, right? And we have some a bachelor student and graduate student. And we have some people from large company. And you'd probably be surprised when you see their um, name cards or the, the main sheet. Um, yes. And, and then, of course, we want all of you to become um, innovators willing to make changes in the world. Okay? So this is what we aim. So this is the big vision that we uh, are have we have for KOH program. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Uh, I want to clarify the uh, difference mm. between innovation and innovative. Yes. Uh, for the first example of innovation, it is it was spread to all over the world. Second one is for the US. Mm -hmm. Third one is for spread to the world. Yeah. And uh, uh, in uh, innovative example, it, it was spread to maybe a town or a uh, very limited area. Yes. So uh, how large area uh, is, it, is innovation mm. needed mm. Uh, for one country or for one, for one city? Great question. Great question. What do you think? So it doesn't matter how much people you're talking about. Maybe. It doesn't matter the volume. Is that what you're saying? The volume. Yeah. The, num the number of people? The number of people. It depends on mm. like, the market. Mm. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Maybe we can, if you, if we um, take maybe one family, family of five people, and make them happy with a new idea, then it, it is absolutely innovation for them, right? And so I think you're you're absolutely right. It's all it's relative. It depends on what you are aiming for. I don't think there is an absolute answer for this, but my personal opinion is one thing is that volume of people, okay? It, it probably has to 
um, be more than a certain number of people. And not only a norm, like the uniform people, but the people with some diversity. So for example, I think it's better, it's more innovation, more innovation, I don't know if that works, but if it's more innovation if your product or service or whatever, or concept is um, admitted or uh, appreciated over multiple countries because now you're talking about more people, but not only the volume, but the culture-wise, language-wise, you're talking about more diverse people, right? So I think, it's, I think it's a multiplication of number and then how much it's diverse, and then I think the duration. So Susan Boyle, who remembers her? Yes, was it an innovation? We thought it was for like a week or so, right? Because many people watched YouTube and then many people appreciated her as, a, as an angel voice or whatever, but it lasted only for a month or so, right? So I think the internet and YouTube you know, brought this phenomenon so easy that you can approach to seven billion people instantly, right? But it doesn't last so much. So I think the, to define innovation and what is innovation and what is not is very, very difficult, but there is a, some parameter that we can think of, the volume, the number of people, and then the diversity that you're talking about, and then the duration. I think there is some combination of these three parameters. This is my personal opinion, and it's not in any um, paper or, or book. Maybe I should write a paper about this, but that's how I'm thinking, and we can, of course, discuss. Yes, thanks for it. Yes. Okay, so, this is a KOH program, so that was a, more of a, a person vision, personal vision, and this is more of a, what we offer as a program. So we expect you here. You have strong domain knowledge. I don't care what that is, engineering, science, um, art, whatsoever, but we selected you. I mean, you um, applied us uh, with a strong background, and then we saw all your, all your resumes and we uh, uh, acknowledged that you have some kind of entrepreneur mindset. You are not a CEO of a startup, but you do have entrepreneur mindset because you are here and in, in, a, in a holiday Monday, right? You're already entrepreneur, I guess. So you have that. And then hopefully you have many international friends. I saw your resume and uh, many of you have um, study abroad experience and work in abroad experience. And then I think this is very, very important to have, a, to you to become an entrepreneur in a global context. So this is what you learn and do in this program, innovative thinking. We will teach you this, or we will do this throughout the coursework. This is a three-day coursework. And then some of you will move into the project work. Um, it's gonna be a short, but um, another intensive, um, project work, you will be working in a um, project-based learning um, curriculum. And then that this is what you become. You will become a person who um, can bring the new value proposition. So that's a one capability out of strong domain knowledge. Based on that, you build up on that. And then you will become a new value proposition capability person. And then with your entrepreneur mindset, we will teach you some techniques in my new mindset, and you will become new business synthesis capability person, and then have an international friend um, attribute or skill. Uh, we will try to convert that into interdisciplinary approach a capable person. So this is the overview of what we're aiming as a KO um, Edge program. Um, and, um, right. and then this is the scope of the KO Edge program. So, because we are talking about, um, because talking about the concept and then the, the, the mindset, I wanted you to try to understand as much as possible, so I drew a lot of diagrams. And for some of you, it may make sense, it may not, but I hope it, it helps you somewhat. So this program has its scope set to all why and what and how domain, okay? Because many seminars or many short programs do focus on how, like how you ideate, like how you design, how you blah, 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 right? But if you recall all the videos that I sent you, 
they're not talking about how, right? They're more talking about the mindset, how you think and how you approach. So our program has set scope set to why and what and how in a, a maybe in an equal balance. But we will talk a lot about why and what, and a little bit about how, because how will help you uh, in various situations. And um, of course, um, entrepreneurial mindset is essential in any of these domains. And then global mindset is also essential of any, uh, in any of these domains. So if, when you're thinking why and what, um, of course you need to be um, thinking in the global context. So these are required throughout the program, but these all three domains will be covered. We will try to cover all of these three in a, in a KOH program. Not, we do not focus on how, okay? And because that will be very um, cheap and it will die in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a couple of years because hows will die really quickly. But why and what doesn't die um, so quickly? So we will try to focus on three domains. And then we will um, talk about why it's important. Okay, we will talk about um, you creating or you coming up with a new business idea as an entrepreneur. We will talk about why your idea is important and why you do it and then what question to solve and what goal to achieve. And then we will talk about how to solve your question and how to implement your idea and how to grow your idea. So these are things that we will cover in this program. Okay, this is another um, diagram showing you what uh, KOH person's capability structure uh, will look like. So, Basically, we are trying to develop a um, KOH person with new value creation capability. Okay? These are all capability. We would like you to become someone who can propose a new value, okay? and who can create a new value, and then you, who can monetize and who can manage that value creation. And oops. to achieve so, we would like you to be comfortable with interdisciplinary approach. Interdisciplinary approach. You are from, most of you, I mean all of you are from different domains and different backgrounds, and we would like you to become comfortable working with different disciplines, and then making it worse working together. Okay, So that's the interdisciplinary approach that we would like you to be familiar with. And then, Interdisciplinary approach is um, enabled by two basic um, thinking techniques. One is design thinking, that's what we will, we will be talking today. And another one is the system thinking, that which we will cover in 29. And then this is another pillar or another column that we expect you to have already, domain knowledge, okay? Because all of you are from different domains. Domain meaning somebody's from mechanical engineering, that's, that's myself. Somebody's from art, somebody's from electrical engineering, somebody's from political science. Those are your domains, okay? This, you need this, okay? If you want to become entrepreneur or innovator or whatsoever, you need to have certain domain. You can, please don't put your, your innovator on your name, name card, okay? Business card, that's not cool. That's not cool because innovator is not your job title. Okay, you. I want to. I want to um, express myself as a systems engineer, who is entrepreneur as well, and probably innovator as well. Okay, I hope you have that image too. And then business synthesis. So, like I said in the in the beginning, we do not cover the, all the MBA stuff. We will talk about MBA stuff, but. We don't do that in an MBA uh, manner. We will cover that so that it will help you um, in uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial um, activities. So business synthesis is a key word for our program. So basically, this is telling you uh, what we want you to become, okay? Strong in domain knowledge, which is, you are already, and then we will, um, train you or we'll give you some exercise on system thinking and design thinking so that you will become 
interdisciplinary approachable person. And then we will talk about the business synthesis and basic techniques so that you can synthesize your business or design your business. And then for what? We want you to become a person who can create a new value. Okay, so that's the, um, our, our capability structure. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the coursework. So the coursework, this is the short, intensive, or is it intensive short? I don't care, but <laughs> it's a three-day workshop style coursework, okay? So this is what we aim. So this coursework um, is, in a, we will, you will learn and do innovative thinking by design thinking, lectures, and exercises. And you will be familiar with the mindset and some tool set. And then system thinking lectures and exercise, and then we would like to be, you to be familiar with the way of thinking and some diagram drawing, and which is quite helpful. And then financial synthesis or business synthesis lectures and exercise, and uh, we would like you to become familiar with the concept and basic techniques. So um, in this coursework, you will learn the both mindset and tool set for design thinking and system thinking and financial synthesis. And then we, um, as a whole, we are calling it an innovative thinking. Okay. So, so for the coursework, I have colored uh, the stuff we will be doing more in the coursework. We will be covering system thinking, design thinking, and then business synthesis, uh, mindset, and techniques. And then we, you will be exercising um, interdisciplinary approach, but not much about new value creation. That because that takes more time. That that is more time consuming. We need a project to do so. So we will leave that for a project work. So, but. For all of you here, we'll do this um, letters in the white, and you will experience how you can approach interdisciplinary. So that's the goal of our coursework. And then there's a project work. And there are two types of project works. Um, we have some students from um, SFGs, right? I, 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 assume, I, I think, I suppose, we have um, three or four students from SFG. And right. Okay. So, like I said, this is our first year program for the KO Edge, and then we are in a in a so to say of a, of a test bed or a pilot program mode. Um, so, probably we will have a larger number of people coming in for the second year um, program because this year is the first our, our first trial, and then um, we wanted to go carefully. I'm not saying you, you learn less. I'm saying you learn more because we don't know what to what not to teach you and what to teach you. So we will do everything for you, right? Next year, we will probably cut it down to half because I'm not gonna squeeze it into three days probably. So you're lucky this year. And we have two courses for a project uh, work. So SDM type PPL, you can read it out later. Uh, we will do, it, do this in a group work five to six people, probably four for this year. And then for SFC type, um, you will uh, be conducting a project work uh, with your um, professor and then the mentor outside of campus. So there are a little difference. And then um, SFC, uh, it's a part of your, their coursework, so they will be credited. And then uh, for SDM type, uh, we do not give out credit. So it's, uh, it's more um, towards the people who are from outside of the KO system. So that's um, how we are different, SDM and SFC. And I'm not gonna get into the SFT detail uh, because I'm not quite sure about um, SFT detail. Um, we may have a professor coming in from SS SFC sometime to talk about the program. But okay, so this is how, how SFC and an SDM type PBL project-based learning are different. So like, we said, like I said, we will be focusing on why domain, what domain, and how domain. But for SDM, SDM type PPA, we will be focused a little bit more on, or not, maybe I should say, you will be spending more time on why domain, why domain. Because as an entrepreneur, um, you're looking for your colleagues and um, somebody to support you, you need to have a very strong why domain, okay? So we will be spending a little bit more time, you will be spending a little bit more time on this why domain to clarify and to structure and trying to propagate that 
or communicate that to, to a stranger. And then for SFC type PBL, you will, be, you will be focusing, or you'll be spending more time on how to solve and then how to implement, okay? I am not saying that both projects are equally focused on every single areas, but this is you spending more time on different domains, okay? So your instructor will help you to develop these areas if you are in S um, SFC PBL, and if you're in SDM type PBL, um, we expect you already have done some experience. If you, you already have some experience in how domain, okay, that, that's what we expect. So we have a um, little bit different expectation for um, two um, project-based learning, okay? And I will talk about SDM type PBL. So, so SDM type PBL aims these three things, new value proposition capability, new business synthesis capability, and interdisciplinary approach capability. And then we will do this um, through the course of the project work. And project work will be done in collaboration. We will get in a project team of um, a multicultural and multidisciplinary members of four to five to six people. And then you will be thinking or approach like a designer, and you will think and approach your uh, problem or solution as a system, and then you will be thinking, um, you will not only be analyzing, but creatively designing your business. So that's what we expect you to do um, in the uh, project work for um, SDM type DBL. And the diagram that I showed you uh, before, now we are moving into this area because we will cover these three things in a coursework, now we want you to be focusing on new value creation in a PBL. And then I would like to call it BYOD party. It's a bring your own discipline party. It's not BYOB. BYOB is bring your own beer party. So that's, uh, you bring your beer to the party, that's a BYOB. But it's a bring your own discipline party. So you will become a team um, with different discipline, discipline people, and I would like you to approach interdisciplinary and then um, try to create a new value, okay? So this is what we will be focusing on, uh, on the PBL. And then there's another aspect that we will be adding on the PBL. Um, we will add a tip to improve English communication skill for non-English, non-English native speakers, yes, non-English native speakers. So, this KO Edge program and in the Edge program in general, all the 13 universities around Japan, um, there is University of Tokyo, there's Kyoto University, there's Osaka University, Aritsuneka University, Waseda University, and more. <laughs> <laughs> you can go online and check. Um, we're all trying to um, do this, not all of them, but many of us are trying to do, run the program in English. And then at the end, I will show you the, the timeline, but at the end of this school year or the physical year in March, um, probably all 13 universities will get together and will do a presentation. Okay? And this will be um, done in English. So to be outstanding among the 13 universities, I, we would like you to give you some tip for um, English um, communication. I, it won't be a cheesy English um, class. It will be um, somewhat more structured and uh, interesting um, English um, improvement uh, techniques. Okay? So that will be added. So this is what it looks like when you get into the PBL. And so SDM type PBL requires you to be iterative in all of these domains and interdisciplinary among throughout these domains, and then early validation, I will talk about this later today, and of course being an um, innovative thinker throughout in, um, of, in, in any of these domains. And then you, be, you will be spending a little bit more time on why domain. So, like I said, you will be iterative, interdisciplinary, and then of course uh, focusing on early validation and then innovative thinking for all these domains. So that's what we, what we would like to um, aim for um, SDM type project based learning, okay? And um, so a little bit, I will go a little bit quickly about the SDM type PPL. So this is what you do and deliver. 
So you will be in a team, and you will be delivering very simple, unfamiliar, but convincing and fascinating business design result with new and innovative value proposition, coarse but solid looking startup plan, and ambitious but interesting growth prospect. Easy, right? Very simple. So I'm saying, give me a great business design. That's what I'm saying. Okay? And then there, there's more that I'm, I, I've written, but you can probably write, um, read it later. I, I, I have described what is new and innovative value proposition, and I have described what is coarse but solid looking startup plan, and what is ambitious but interesting growth prospect. Okay? So this is what you will be delivering. You will try to deliver at the end of the project-based learning of the SDM type. Okay? And then to support you throughout this project work, we have a variety of um, instructors. Uh, I will, we will get um, them introduced to you, but we have, a, like myself, engineering science background people, but we're not um, normal science and um, engineering background people. We're engineering science background people who are more um, interested in complex and dynamic system, which provides new value. So that's who we are. We have business and management background people who are interested in synthesizing and managing new business model, which enables new value chain. And we have an information architecture background person uh, who uh, is interested in communicating regardless of language and discipline within global context. And we have a design background faculty member who are um, aiming for design and manage not only colors and shapes, but philosophy and principle of the deliverable. So that's, um, these are the instructors you will, you will be um, seeing. And then we are all, we all practice entrepreneurial mindset in a global context. So you will, I, I hope you, uh, you have fun talking with these people and um, you will get to know them um, pretty soon. And just a quick comment about the SFC type project-based learning. I don't uh, have much detail, but um, this is uh, what they have. So they call the, they, they have a project in the middle, and then um, I think you are here, the participants, and then you will be teaming up with, um, here, Kokunai um, Kyoryuk So that will be your mentor uh, within um, Japan. And then, of course, your professor will um, help you. So you will be basically in a small team of you and professor or instructor and then um, the mentor. And after you've done a um, certain uh, amount of coursework or the project work in Japan, you will have a chance to go to um, field work in field work overseas. So that's the, the program structure. And um, that's that's all, and I don't have much more detail, but um, we, you will probably, if you're from SFC, um, you will probably hear from um, Ikeda Sensei or um, uh, somebody else uh, pretty soon. Okay, so, okay, the schedule. So this is a schedule that we have. Um, intensive three-day course work um, is to get you ready with the right equipment, so that's what um, this is for. So some of you will um, be, uh, just be attending the coursework, and then, some of you will be attending the project work. So um, we will uh, probably choose about 16 people to stay with us, and then we will, um, we need to ask uh, um, the rest of the people to, uh, to maybe, hopefully, join us next year, because we, like I said, we cannot handle many people this year. We can just handle about 16 people for this year, because this is our first challenge. So, and then um, for those of you who remain for uh, project work, we will have um, KO Innovation Forum, which is on March, and we will have an Edge Forum, which will be in, in sometime in March that uh, 13 schools will get together and then do presentation and we'll do probably be doing the some competition altogether. So that's what we're, uh, this is what it looks like. And then um, there's the long-term perspective. So this is our first year, or zeros year, and then second year, and then third year. So this is you participating this year, right? And we want your friend, or you, I want you to recruit them to participate next year. Because we really want good student or a good participant to join the program. 
um, who are willing to become global um, concern entrepreneur or entrepreneur in the global context. And then we rely on you to recruit um, all those candidates. And you become a mentor probably the next year. And then another uh, new thing with, 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 with that will happen next year is we're going to have participants from overseas. We are already talking with um, India and um, Indonesia. Actually, three faculty members just came back from Jakarta last night. <laughs> so they're tired. If you see them sleeping, that's them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then your friend will recruit a friend of yours, and then he or she will participate in third year. And then you can come back as a mentor, maybe an instructor, or even angel with money. <laughs> okay? So this is what we are calling KO Edge ecosystem. Okay? So you don't just go out and you know say bye bye after after this three day course or a PBL. We will love you to come back. Okay? We will love you to come back. And so after several years, uh, we expect all of you to become KOH alumni. And then um, I hope we can keep in touch uh, for uh, various opportunities. And uh, we would like to have um, continue our conversation. Um, not only for three years, maybe um, after that too. Okay, so this is the overview of the course uh, coursework and then the project work. And there, like I said, we need to select some people among you to uh, come to our project work. So this will be the uh, big picture of um, KOH program. And then we are expecting 16 participants for the SDM type PBL. And we are all considered, considered as a candidate. So you are all considered as a candidate right now. And we'll be evaluated according to the selection criteria. So, you know, I, I, you know, I may sound harsh, but we need to do this, okay? So, among you, we will ask uh, about 16 of you to join our project-based learning. You will be the guinea pigs. You're the first batch. So, guinea pig, orumoto. Yes. Guinea pig, orumoto. Okay. So you'll be back. <laughs> okay. So this will be the selection criteria. So I wanted to clarify this is what we will be doing for three days. Okay, based on your intensive short course work performance, participants will be evaluated individually with basic points and special points. And these are uh, basic points. Team contribution. We will um, qualitatively measure measure your team contribution. So you will be working in teams, so we will be um, moderately looking at your discussion, how you accommodate, how you facilitate, and how you motivate, okay? This is what we'll be looking at um, qualitatively. And in class contribution, quantitative measures uh, by instructors. So I already have spoken, uh, many of you have spoken already. Uh, we will be moderately counting number of questions and number of comments and number of presentations. Um, within these three days. So these will be the basic points so that we will have uh, more um, good guinea pigs to play around in the BBL. Or, you know, we, we just want to keep our um, project-based learning level um, in a certain level so that um, uh, people will, many of you will satisfy with the program. And then the special point will be um, given to those who will perform outstandingly a, as, a, as a person with strong background, for example, like a very deep domain knowledge or expert talent or um, expert knowledge. So these will be um, qualitatively measured by the instructor because we are, there are so many instructors around you uh, who will be uh, moderately looking at that. And then um, uh, the entrepreneurial mindset is something that we're looking for as well. Um, and outstanding performance as a global context-minded person and then another thing is that um, outstanding performance as an innovative-minded person. So these are things that we are looking for, okay? And I hope, I know most of you have it, and we're looking, looking for um, those who are, uh, who are more um, 
who, who are with more characteristic like this. And then the selection result will be uh, sent out by December 1st, so the, the next day, right after the third day. And then we will ask about 16 people to come join our project-based learning um, course. So that will be a 16 people, okay? Okay, so I have been talking for about 90 minutes. Any question? Yes. to be unfair, right? Is it pressuring you so much? Some may feel. Some may feel, yes. Please don't. Because you're all capable, we know that. We're, you're all capable, but you know, what we need to do is we need to have a good guinea pigs. <laughs> no. So this is what we want. Okay, we want, to, this is our first year trial. We want a lot of feedback from the participants. We need what to what to improve. We need to what to add. We need to what to fix. Okay. So we need somebody we can communicate. We need somebody who can understand what we're saying. All right. So that's why we are setting this criteria. And I'm sorry, some of you you may feel this is kind of pressure, but yes, this is how we do this. Yes. Maybe this doesn't suit the Japanese context, but. You, I don't know, if you go abroad, this is normally how its course is provided, right? But at least it's clear, right? At least it's clear how you're rated, right? So, yes? Are you a good cook? Uh, <laughs> Are you a good cook? Uh, I hope so. Okay, I think you're better better cook than a graduate student. So we're not talking about your your knowledge on the academia side. We're talking about you know different expertise. So when we say special knowledge or special outstanding performance, I'm not talking about just the uh, um, the grades on your the paper test. Okay. I am, we are talking about um, different background, not um, like engineering or science, but maybe you're great surfing skills, right? Maybe you're really good at talking to people. Those are considered to be strong background, okay? Thank you. Nope. Yes? Uh, I don't feel any pressure, but uh, yes. did you ask for uh, feedback? Yeah, we can do that. Well, right. Um, right now, we are not planning to do one by one, but if you uh, would like to have that conversation, we're more than happy to do that. Yeah? Okay? All right. So, sorry it took me long, longer than I thought, but I really want to clarify what we're doing and where we're going, and then I hope you agree what we're doing, and then I hope it sounded kind of fun. Or pressure, <laughs> but yes. Um, so basically, we are we will be covering three things: so design thinking approaches, system thinking approaches, and how you synthesize with businesses. So these are three aspects we will be covering, and I hope um, that will help you in uh, many ways. All right, let's take a break. Let's take a break about ten minutes. Let's take a break until. Um, 20 minutes before 11, so on 10:40, okay? 10:40 minutes before 11, okay? So the restroom is outside. If you go straight that way, and then don't go outside the door. It's it's right next to the door. It's to your right, okay? All right, let's take a break. Thank you. 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 Thank you.